what's happening? How's it going? Oh, look at that. It just keeps getting angrier and angrier. Screw you, I... That's what you get. That's what you get. Hey, Bruno, how's it going? Time to paint the orc render. So yesterday, on the stream, I modeled this. Uh, I just switched on the lights and took that one. And today we will paint it. I'm gonna paint the orc. Just as a test to see, yet again, to see how how we can develop um, the idea. I'm gonna just switch off the screen for a brief second because I don't want to show the thing I'm not supposed to show. Hey guys, today how's it going? So I um I loaded up the paint overs I've done so far just to kind of go through them and remind ourselves our starting point in terms of modeling quality. This being the very first I did on stream. Uh, had its technical difficulties. This was a lunch stream. No, a night stream. That's fun. Here's a warm up. And here's yesterday's model. Hey, dear bird, how's it going? So, today we will be painting on this one to see um, where we can take it in terms of uh, speed and quality and using a 3D base. And uh, Hey Zelen, good morning. And yesterday, on my lunch, um, I modeled uh, I modeled this one. So it's an hour model. Um, turned out pretty fun. Um, starting be to be a lot more comfortable with like when to increase detail and when to uh, block in form and how to juggle between the two um, to kind of maintain quality. I have yet to understand how to get like high fidelity models. They're all quite crude so far. You can see the resolution. Uh, I assume it's a matter of pushing. Look at that eye, by the way. Get all in anger here. Looks like I've been fighting. Hey, fresh, you fresh, I'm weeping, Jay. How's it going? So, I spent some time. You see, rush, yeah. Uh, I spent some time uh, painting one of the uh, the alien from yesterday under my lunch. It turned out pretty, pretty okay. Um, as it was a little bit of our preparation for today, just to see, like, to what degree should I. Uh, repaint to what degree should I maintain quality um, so we will paint this guy today so without further ado let's go so photo I have updated Photoshop to Photoshop 2020 so I have no idea certain shortcuts I've already noticed um, some differences from my old previous version so I will most likely swear at some point hey rocket barrage how's it going what's up and uh, as I took screenshot of this model yesterday with the, the uh, temporary lighting setup I realized that um, there's no subsurface scattering uh, activated in the material because there's zero material. Uh, 
but uh, I'll fake it. It's not really needed. It just adds that little nice extra layer of uh, behavior to the model. But yeah, so this this process I find um, I find quite interesting, and I, I I can see it being very useful for uh, a lot of people. Um, one of them being uh, a student student of the trade, you know, trying to figure out how it all works. Um, because, like I said uh, on a previous stream. Um, Rocket Barrage. Yes, this is from yesterday. Uh, yesterday I did a 30-minute model on the topic Fat Orc. Uh, and today I, I, I'm going to paint... Um, I'm going to paint it to see um, how much I can... That shortcut isn't there anymore. I need to add that shortcut. Uh, Weird workspace interface works in general. Interface workspace tools. No. Where did you do plugins? Keyboard shortcuts, <laughs> dude. Image. Uh, Image size? No. Flip horizontal. Control F1. Accept. Okay. Hey, Gria, how's it going? There we go. Now we have flipping powers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see where where this character um, can be taken with some quick. Uh, paint and so on. Um, like I started explaining, uh, I think it's a really good um, starting point for for beginning artists to practice um, what they know. Uh, I think there is there's lots of potential to um, learn by experimenting with this. Um, you won't learn as far as I kind of figured out so far is that you won't learn a lot about painting. You won't learn anything really about painting because you're not going to have any ability to um, like truly paint right now now I'm yes I am painting on top of the model but I am making more corrections than anything I'm not really you know truly painting here I'm painting on, on top of a model uh, like yes I am actually you know technically painting but it would be absolutely opposite result if I would um, paint it from scratch um, and I'm not trying to be a purist here <laughs> more of more of like a, a statement um, but what I do think that someone uh, one is starting out in the industry um, what they could learn uh, learn from learning to sculpt or play around with sculpt um, in sculpting in, in blender is that you can try out your visual library you can practice things in more than one angle and you can correct yourself in in the way you're you're thinking 
like let's say you have a bad habit uh, I should die I will get to that um, so you, let's say you have a bad habit in how you paint a nose right the nose is stylized or whatever and, it, and it's hard to understand really how the form is on the nose and then you have to then you you experiment with sculpting right and you look at the sculpting um, the sculpt and you go hmm oh okay the nose bridge how does that actually work so you look at a photo from the front and you look a uh, photo from the side and then you 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 model it right and then you go oh that's how they are connected and it's an absolutely different experience uh, from looking at those two photos and painting it versus looking at those two photos and modeling it because you are experiencing it absolutely in different dimensions for sure and when you're doing it uh, 2d you're relying on your brain's ability to project what you're doing into a 3d space versus 3D already within a 3D space and you can rotate the camera, you can see it from a different angle and grasp it significantly easier. So take that little simple uh, example and then exaggerate that to a fat orc. You know, how would you realize this fat orc? How would you sculpt the masses? How would you add the details? And, and so on and so forth. And, and, and it's like practicing, practicing your thinking and uh, implementing your understanding of 3D form in a 3D space. And su supplement your 2D practices with playing around in sculpt to see what that does. Well, I think I'm quite sure, I guarantee you it will change and improve your skill set. Hey Captain Balls, how's it going? Good morning! <laughs> Gria, are you stuck on a character? Post it on Discord and ask for help. If you can, of course. Um, so, Ice Die. So you mean painting over a screenshot of a 3D sculpt? Because I think I learned more from uh, Polypaint. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing um, what I talked about nose uh, and the same with polypaint. The problem with polypaint is that there is a, it's b behind a um, technical ball. While painting, you can just paint, right? But it's, painting is still behind a technical wall in, in general. You know, so it's a little bit you know a moot point but let me continue so when when you see a 3d form and you paint on top of the 3d form um, you you can understand it differently it's the exact same way like you can you can rotate the camera you can see um, where the paint is on onto the 3d form but because you're sinking 2d onto a 3d form it's al also not correct but it does help you. Um, it does help you project what you're seeing in an absolutely different way, and it might unlock um, certain th certain tracks of thinking. You know. So I think that's the power of 3D and, and modern day 3D tools and having light and perspective and so on. And like Frencha says, like you had a really hard time understanding um, a, the, a certain perspective. You do a quick 3D block out and you see the correct version. Well, it's not correct because it, it, a lot of things can change. You can, the, it can change with lens distortion. It can change with you know all these things and but it's easier for you to see what you've had in mind 
uh, already uh, at a higher complexity, right? So when you do look at it, you can you can understand what you're trying to solve in an absolutely different way. It's like you you're hijacking your own mind and connecting it to another person's brain, and all of a sudden you get a completely different point of view on the same subject, and you can go, oh yeah, okay, and now we get it. All right, 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 right. But you're actually just teaching yourself. Hey, Frox, how's it going? Uh, but with all things, much like uh, 2D and painting, uh, the same is with 3D and um, the technical uh, gap, right? The, 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 the technical threshold that holds you back uh, from being able to create something freely, which is on, on all games, is the s <laughs> games? Games? Stupid brain. In all <laughs> pursuits, it's the same, right? Uh, in all genres, um, you you gotta get past the technical threshold to be able to to uh, create something that you know without being withheld by by uh, technical mastery. So very much. Um, with all things. If you start using 3D, you have to understand that it'll be rough for a while. Until you can start, um, uh, what's it called? Be cre truly creative. But if you're beginning and, and trying to learn, there's multi facets that things that are going to keep you back from being creative. One being uh, theory and the second being technical implementation of that said theory So like that's 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 a lot of problems, but like I said, I, I believe that using 3d and Understanding 3d at least um, Allows you to practice your skill set in a in quite a different way which I think is very useful to, to be able to do. And uh, as as a um, <laughs> Frox, hundred days until Unreal Bjornament? Is it only that few? Oh, shoot. I need to stop slacking and start preparing. Yeah. So. I think uh, I was thinking uh, today while making coffee like what would be a good um, day ruined by school oh jeez jeez man jeez um, so I was thinking while making coffee what would be a great exercise to do in 3D um, and I I, I I realized that doing anatomy in 3D that would probably be a really good exercise and a very difficult exercise Frox <laughs> oh no I know that I've done the same I've done the same move it's like yeah I'm on time perfect and then it's like it's already done I missed everything yep. been there done that but imagine doing 3d anatomy study is going to require an, a completely absolutely completely different understanding um, 
of three dimensionality. Yes, that's a word I just made it up, I believe. <laughs> and uh, your knowledge of how it all works. What if we could come up? Um, what if we could come up with a cool lesson to do? Which is, which is like a um, step-by-step -step anatomy class in 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 Blender two point eight. And what you could do is do um, inside out class of the basics. So what I mean about that is imagine imagine there is a let's say a gumroad or a class here where where lecture 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 one is um, like learn blender right that's like these are the buttons they do this these are the settings so you should consider this here's a starting file with uh, already set up light you can adjust yourself this is how you adjust them this is you know how you rotate blah 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 and then lesson two is map out the proportions of the, from this reference so everyone gets the same reference um and they all should reproduce the reference in 3d and like the basic version is like let's start with an arm right so here's the arm uh, reference um, make the skeleton skeleton first right and you map out the skeleton and then second lesson is okay skeleton skeleton is done Let's add the muscles, right? But then you add the muscles on top. And then when the muscles are added on top, um, then let's add the skin. So you start smoothing and, and, you know, like leveling out the muscles and so on and making it uh, look like skin. And then trying to understand like the volume of the bicep, the volume of the lower arm, you know, like where's the tendons going in the hand. And you just, you know, when, when the skeleton is approved, you know, by someone checking the skeleton, like, is it the right proportions, what's missing and so on. Uh, because you can do 3D annotations in Blender. Then you, you, you know what to adjust and then when you add the muscles there's someone else who reviews it and like no you should pay attention to these these and these that would be really cool i think that would be a fantastic way to learn 3d and then when you've done the arm you draw it you use it as reference and you draw what you modeled The volume of your biceps in, is in negative. Oh, rip. Do some push ups. That solves it. It's important to have a healthy body, especially if you're sitting all day. So get those push ups going. <laughs> Does the app do the push-ups for you? Mm. In theory, yes. But there's a hard hard time to get it back into you. All those gains on the app. Who about that to remind you? <laughs> No, but in all in all honesty, 
Uh, I think that will be a really cool um, lecture, you know, class to, to take. I, I wouldn't mind someone uh, doing all those things for me, like checking that your proportions are correct, checking that your anatomy is correct, and then then them pinpointing like, oh yeah, you messed up, messed up on the tricep or whatever. Like it, it curves this way, not that way, and yeah, it will be fantastic. This kind of interactive homework in 3D and then after that you, you use it as a what are they called um, bar 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 Q barg 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 drawing this white clay cast white uh, ceramic cast Gria. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's good fun. It's good fun. And, you, and when you do things like this, uh, when you already have a base and you're going to try to make it better, um, it's always, uh, for me at least, it changes my approach because I don't need to paint anything um, from scratch, right? There's no marks being made that I'm building the painting on top of, right? This is re it's just using what's already been established and it creates, at least it creates a completely different setup in how I approach um, the subject, which in, in itself, you know, proves my point um, in how 3D can uh, work for you. And uh, like a simple little thing, like when you're modeling, you can look at the profile and adjust the nose so that the nose looks cool from the profile. And then from the front, it really doesn't change, but it changes enough in a subtle way so that when you look at it in a three quarter view, you go, oh, that's what it does. Oh, okay, now I will remember. Next time I will make a weird short nose, I got to pay pay attention to these little things and you would never do that um, in 2d unless you found a reference a real-world reference that you could walk around and look at because if you look find a photo on internet about a nose like that it won't change your understanding of it, it you will only be more accurate in representing uh, the kind of simulation of it right because you, you won't really understand it until you see it in 3d and even though let's say i photograph a nose and look at the photograph of the nose it's not the same as in stereo vision seeing it you know about 12 <laughs> yeah like this this is me tomorrow morning. Uh, about 12. I, I, you missed in the morning, but uh, I spent uh, my lunch yesterday painting this. I don't remember if you joined in, but it's the same amount of time. Not like the orc. The orc is half this time. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to have fun. Next thing I want to learn is uh, vertex painting or poly painting uh, on, 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 in Blender. I'm not. I'm. I haven't. I started reading about it yesterday, uh, trying to find out the terminology. <laughs> That's how much of a noob I am, right? I tried to figure out what's the terminology for painting on the polygons in Blender, and then I will be able to understand what I need to Google, and then I will understand what I need to learn, right? That's that's my old school way of learning. What's it called? And then when I know what it's called. How do I do it? <laughs> so I'll show you uh, what we started out with on this warm up. So it was just a, a, gray, a gray box with um, some colored light.
and we're, we're painting on the orc 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 fat orc so tomorrow everyone we will do the next 30 minute sculpt uh, and it will again be based on uh, your suggestion so please have pity on me and don't make the topic like ridiculously complicated and uh, and preferably not a lot of hard surface stuff as I haven't practiced hard surface stuff uh, and it doesn't really lend its well self to be really strong with hard surface things in sculpting but if there is hard surface elements I'll add them of course in a basic poly shape uh, but yeah so I'm looking forward to see what what we come up with tomorrow uh, to model uh, in half an hour and then uh, come Monday uh, the idea is come Monday uh, I will try to use something as a source of uh, st for study Monday to implement to the paint over of the thing we model tomorrow so we're going to do study of something and implement it to the paint over to fully grasp it maybe make, make it water or you know completely switch it up uh, to try to play around with our perception of things. Oh, well, good that the stream is not lagging. I'm not getting any warnings either. Um, maybe it was just you, which is a shame, but good thing for everyone else. So that's the idea, right? We're going to do a model tomorrow. And the idea of studying a material and apply it to the sculpt to drastically alter our perception of the sculpt, I think is a cool thing. So let's, like as an example, let's take this fat orc and would it be on Monday, I would say, let's, gonna, let's paint this like it's made out of water, right? So we're going to try to simulate water material on the paint over using the 3D base. So that's... That's kind of like what I had in mind, what we should do um, on Monday morning after tomorrow's sculpt. So whatever, whatever we're going to sculpt tomorrow is arbitrary uh, to Monday morning. So it's going to try to be two different, uh, two, two separate things, right? So not one feeds into the other. Um, Froax, um, no, not necessarily. If you if you're bored of three D, we can go back to painting. Um, no one really has commented on it. Um, people seem to like me join doing three D and learning three D together with you. Uh, if you find it boring, um, please let me know. We don't need to do this. Um, I can easily switch back to two D only. <laughs> I can easily, there's no problem, I love it. No, but truly, if you guys don't like it, no problem whatsoever. I, I can I can teach uh, myself Blender offline. Um, but I thought it would be educational as it's, um, I believe is going to be more and more an industry standard and would be a good thing to learn. Hey, Rasta, Rasta alien, Rasta alien. Bring me to your leader. <laughs> it was the best attempt at the reggae beat. Um, Rasta Alien. If you're not a seasoned professional, uh, that that changing tool makes a difference. If you're learning, if you're beginner to intermediate, any tablet would do. You don't need a Cintiq to be good at drawing. You don't need a Cintiq to, to get hired. You just need a, a device that you can paint with. So use a tablet. You, you, any, any of the Wacom series, will do the job. One thing to keep in mind though, the bigger the tablet, the bigger the movement. 
The smaller the tablet, the smaller the movements. So one thing that you should keep in mind is if you're really used to one-to-one -to -one mapping in your motion, like for me, I use a Cintiq 24-inch, uh, right? So for me, the movement I'm making is extremely one-to-one. -one. Uh, when I use a 24, um, A4, I mean, an A4, what's that? Six, and, six times eight um, tablet, there was always a, cert a certain adaptation of my movements onto the screen, especially if you had a bigger screen, right? So you moved a little while the cursor moved a lot on the screen. That's the only difference. And that's the only thing you should take into consideration in how you work. But that being said, it doesn't matter. I would say it doesn't matter. Any line of Wacom series would do suffice. Uh, the only thing, the higher the, um, the cost, the higher the fidelity and the pressure sensitivity. But that's a minor thing. If you buy like a good medium quality, not like super pro line, just a good, good one, it should be fine. There's also good reports on Huawei's latest uh, and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of people not using Wacom brands, which absolutely can paint regardless. So I wouldn't worry too much about ruining yourself, uh, buying an extremely expensive gear. Uh, get first, buy a uh, not expensive one, get really, really good using that, start earning money. And when you're earning money, save up for the more expensive version. But if you're just starting out, if you don't need the monster to get hired, you don't need the monster to be good, you know. For my, f for the first, let's say, five years of my career, I used a, um, I used a Intius. The first A4 or seven times eight inch tablet from Wacom and then the next five years I used a, a Intius, Intius at that time it was just called Intius which grew into the pro line but at that time it was just the Intius 2 or Intius and then I used that one for five years and then I bought no four years then I bought a Cintiq and, and that's what I'm happy with currently but it doesn't matter like you could easily use a starter one. Rust alien, yeah, yeah. So <coughs> that's a that's a that's a thing that I I also I'm very tra from traditional, and then I I did this whole mapping thing. I got used to it, and you you can get used to it. It's just a matter of mileage. But th then I went back to Cintiq, where you see the you know one to one mapping of your motions, and I was like, yes, finally, I can do what I love doing in a completely more natural way. And I didn't go back. But you do get used to it, for sure. All right, so that's it. This, um, this is where we ended up. Um, with a fat orc based on the yesterday's warm-up. 30-minute th sculpture with 30-minute paint on top. Pretty fun, quite enjoyable. Um, we'll see tomorrow. We're going to do another 30 minute model or 30 minute sculpt based on your topic tomorrow. So please join in, give me a suggestion. We will roll a dice and then, uh, what's it called? Random chance will pick which one we will.
paint, uh, sculpt, and then come Monday we will do a study to implement on the sculpt. It's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating. <laughs> Cheers, Rocket Barrage. So what we're gonna do is we usually we do always we do a raid. So let's uh, oh Chloe Ventura is doing something nice, nice. Let's let's raid her. So as per usual, um, we're gonna do the outro. So have a great day. Good night if you're that part of the world. See you tomorrow for another warm up. Yet another one. That's where you come from, Eric and Ricky. <laughs> I know. I know. All right, let's do the outro and then take you to the raid. Bye.